Hi everybody and welcome back to a brand new vlog. So can you guys guess what the theme of this vlog is? I'm wearing my UCLA sweatshirt and I feel so young and cute in it, Nick. Don't you think? The last time you wore the sweatshirt was when we filmed one of our first videos last, last year at this time. Oh my god, we've been doing this for a year, Nick. Titled, I'm going back to school. And that, actually, everyone should go watch that video too. Yeah, that was a really good one. Do you remember what we talked about? Absolutely not. I think we talked about your journey of going to school. Oh, that's right. And I was like, for the thumbnail, I was holding like my Tufts diploma. Yes. Okay, got it. Yes, everyone. It's going to be the link down below. Go watch it. It's really informative really nice and for today's video a lot of you guys asked me about like I'm in college Nina how do I study or I'm trying to enter college do you have any tips for me um, just I just get a lot of oh a dental school how do I get into dental school a lot of questions so I thought let's do another video about sort of my experiences with college how I studied whether I got loans or not have I paid back my loans just everything and anything and again these are based on my experiences I'm hoping that you guys will learn from the things that I didn't do or just learn in general and hopefully help you guys out with everything. So a lot of you guys um, in the DMs asked me, Nina, should I go to a community college first or go into like, a, you know, four-year institutions such as like UCLA, USC, uh, Boston University. Um, and this is my thought process on it. So when I graduated high school, um, I went directly from high school into UCLA. So that's what I did. But then, because I, I didn't know there was that option of community college and then you transfer to UCLA. But then around the third year when I was at UCLA, a lot of, and I was in the Persian club and whatnot, so we would meet for lunch and we'd have meetings and all of a sudden there was an influx of third year students coming from like around here, like Santa Monica College, which is a community college, or Pierce College, which is a community college. And I was like, how did you guys get here? And they were like, no, you can do two years at a community and then transfer, which I didn't know. Mm. The high school I went to was uh, like, it was a prep school. So basically like there was not even uh, a discussion that you're gonna go to community. Like everybody was supposed to graduate great grades and go to like a four year institution, you mm -hmm. know? So they never even taught us that option. So I had no clue. So when I learned about it, I was like, wow. And there was a transfer, like they transfer you immediately. And it's well, so a 100% transfer. The only thing I don't know- Not always, you still have to get your GPA. It's not 100%. Really? So your GPA, so you still have to get accepted into the college. Oh, okay, okay, so so keep up your GPA. So that's the thing though. So these are the differences now that I know. What is the positives, what's the negative? Well, the positive for going directly into a four-year school is that you get familiarized with the school, you have friends, you have colleagues, you know, whatnot, and it's like you don't have to switch after two years to go to a new institution, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of like when I went to UCLA, and I did, I did five years there, by the way, and I'll let you guys know why, instead of four, um, actually, most students, UCLA students, and tell me if I'm right, you, uh, we're all on the five-year plan, right? Um, so the, the positive is that, again, you go into the institution, you learn, like for me at UCLA, it was a quarter system. You learn the quarter system, you kind of are already familiar with it. So in your third year, you don't have to go and all of a sudden start a whole new cycle of, oh my God, new school, where do I go, what do I do? Because I know a lot of community colleges are on the semester system, and UCLA was on quarterly. So a lot of the students that transferred actually had problems transitioning between semester to quarter because mm -hmm. quarter goes like that. I love it. I do too, actually. I do too, because if you don't like the class, it goes by fast and you're just like, boom, boom, boom. So I don't like semester because I feel like it just drags on, but that's everyone's preference. Now, the one big negative in going into four-year college versus starting at community first is the expense. Community colleges are a lot less expensive than four-year universities. So you do get to save a lot of money, you know, um, and that's what a lot of these kids did. Well, some of them, they weren't able to get into a four-year school. And that's also, if you don't get in, do not panic. Go to community school. They're much easier to get accepted, less expensive. Listen to it. If you don't get into a four-year college, don't panic. Just go to a community college. It's a lot more affordable than a four-year university. Big plus, big plus. Also, you're taking the same core classes that you would be taking at a four-year college, like the basics. What do you call those? The classes? GEs. I, I'm sorry, the GEs. General ed? Or general something? ed, exactly. The same general ed, it's like chemistry, biology, right? If, if you're like studying medicine, you know, or pre-dental, whatnot. So it's not like you're missing out on much. Get your good grades, save some money, then go to a four-year university, you know? So that's that with that. What do you feel about state schools versus private schools versus universities? You know, UCs. UCs, um, like by private schools, you mean like Harvard? 
I don't know if that's a private. Is that a private school? I don't know. I know Tufts Dental well, is a private school. USC is a private school. USC is a private school. UCLA is a public. Right. And what else? State school. So, like, let's just say, like, I didn't. I went directly to a state school. I went to Cal State LA. I turned down UCLA. <gasps> Thank you. Your state. Your school is really good. It's all right. Not nothing but UCLA. But I don't believe in it. Uh, never mind. Okay. Um, would you recommend people? To go to like UCs or private or state schools, like what are your feelings on the three? Okay, so what do I think about the differences between private school, um, public, or a state school? For example, I went to a public school, UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, is a public institution. So the good thing was that the tuition, even though it was high, it's a lot less than, for example, USC, University of Southern California. It's crazy expensive. How much is it? Like a hundred thousand dollars a year now? Probably close, but you also have to like take all these tests to get in and like meetings and I don't know. Oh my God. And don't forget like room and board and all of that. So the, I went to UCLA just because I really like the neighborhood, you know, and I live really close to UCLA now, which is kind of like, I don't know. But anyway, so I really like the neighborhood. So I chose the UCLA because I liked the program. I thought that the, I liked the tuition, you know, I thought that was a much more affordable than, for example, a private school like USC. I liked the neighborhood and I was really close to my parents' house and I was very, and still am very close to my parents. So I did move into a dorm room, but I was back home like every other second, you know? So UCLA is much closer to my parents' home than USC. So those are reasons I chose UCLA. But a lot of my friends, they chose USC, which is a private school, and private schools tend to have a much better alumni system than public or state schools. What does that mean? Okay, so basically what it means, like if you graduate from USC and you go to look for a job, they will give you a list of alumni from USC. Mm. And the alums at USC, the second you walk in for a job, if there's 50 other people, even with better grades, whatever, than you, if he's a USC alum, he will hire you, me, as a USC alum over anybody else. The very tight alumni, you know, and that's one of the biggest reasons people go to USC. But again, it's so much more expensive, you know, and the neighborhood of it's harder to get in. And no, UCLA is harder to get in. I don't think that's true anymore. Really? I think I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the facts. I'll can put it guys, up on the screen. Yeah, but he'll put it up on the screen. But can you guys let us know when I applied to UCLA? UCLA was so much more difficult to get into, or any UC school versus USC. So let us know now, though. Okay, so let us know. Um, but, oh, state school. And again, I don't think there's any issues with the state school. It's still a four-year college, right? Um, it's less expensive than I believe a public school, I liked school, it. Right? It is. My, my state, I went to Cal State LA and I yeah. chose it over UCLA. I turned it down. Um, number one, because it was a quarter system for me. Mm -hmm. And number two, it was about 19000 a year, including room and board and like a small meal plan. I did have much more expenses than that. Of course. But like... How much was UCLA at the time? Um, I have no idea. I didn't even entertain it Got because it. I didn't, I didn't want to go to school. Right. I was just going to, my parents are going to hate me saying this, to please my parents. Ah, uh, I because see. Because they're like Middle Eastern traditional, you right. need to go to school to have a good career. But actually as they've gotten older, they've kind of shifted views a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, no, I get it. I, I wanted get to it. be in and out. Oh, got it. So, and then for that reason, let's just say if you're just getting a four year degree just to get a four year degree, if you're getting it to please your parents, if you, if you're, <laughs> but don't do it, do everything for yourself. Exactly. Now, at my age, I'm like, do everything for yourself. But it doesn't matter. Some of you might be in that situation. True. Then choose a state school. Because I have a feeling if the state school is 19,000, you'd say they could have been like 50. Probably. Right? And then uh, USC might have been 80, you right. know? So it's like if you're doing it just for the sake of the four year, I'm, here's my diploma, mom and dad, or whoever, whatever reason you're doing it, then choose the state school, go with the less expensive, you're still gonna get a phenomenal education, and you're gonna get your diploma. So I don't think you should spend more money if that's reasoning. Yeah, you know, I think you should like weigh out all your options and like figure out what's best for you. Like I think location's important, of yep. where the school is, yep. and uh, what you wanna, oh, that's another point. What you wanna study. A lot of people go to community colleges because they don't know what to study, so that why would you spend so much money at a state school or UC if you don't know what you wanna get into and then you're there for 10 years as opposed to five. Exactly, so why did I end up at UCLA for five years? I was so, I didn't know if I really wanted to go to med school and I, at the, Early, late fourth year, I think early fifth year, that's when I volunteered with my dentist. He talked to me about dental school and that's when I shifted gear. Mm. So I ended up, that's what it was. I was like, I wanted to be a doctor. So you pay much more money to be there for another year. 
Yes, I did. So, but, and that happens with a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. you, you start like with sociology. And you're like, oh, I don't like that one. You think law. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, medicine. I don't like that. Engineering. Oh, that's the one. By that time, you're like, oh, now I have to pick up these other classes right. to be able to graduate so that I can get into engineering school. And that's what happened to me. And it's okay if you don't know. I have a lot of friends. I'm 25. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who are still in school and I they still know. have no idea what they want to do. I mean, do. And honestly, I didn't know you guys. So that's why I ended up with the five-year plan at UCLA. And I'm glad that I did. Because I, if I would have gone to medical school, I would have not been as happy as I am as a dentist. You know, and the reason I was dragging my feet, dragging, not like going in, like doing the MCAT and getting to med school, because there was always some part of me that I didn't want to work like five, six days a week. I didn't want to do the 36 hour shifts, you know? Mm -hmm. And as much as like I was in school for so many years for undergraduate and dental school, but I didn't want to be, but doing medicine is a lot longer. You have residency, you have all this stuff. And I, I just, I was dragging my feet. I, I've always worked, don't get me wrong, I'm not lazy, but I really wanted to live the lifestyle that my dentist was at the time, practicing three days a week and doing whatever else with his time the rest of the time, you know what I mean? And that's why I think like once I volunteered in the dental clinic and I realized, wow, I actually kind of really like this, and then it's fine, an extra, you know, by then I was into my fifth year, just finishing things up, boosting my GPA, this and that, and it was well worth it. So take your own pace. Oh. One other thing. So be at your own pace and do it for you. But if you have to please some Middle Eastern family members <laughs> or whatever, they just go to state school and save your money. So let's get into the money aspect because that is really important. I know a lot of you have DM me, I want to go to college. My parents don't have the money. I don't have the money. So these are a couple of options that you guys can do. So for me, for my undergraduate, my parents actually paid for everything for me, which I'm beyond thankful and grateful for them. When it came time to dental school, they were going to pay and I said, no. I literally said, no, I'm like, no, I'm going to take a loan because I went to a private school. Tufts is a private school and it was almost $200,000 that I took a loan out on, by the way, you know, you can buy a house in some places with that. Most places. <laughs> Most, well, not LA, mm. not LA. But, um, so I took out and there were two different types of loans. There's a private loan and I believe a federal aid loan. Mm. So I took as much of the government loan as I was able to, and the rest of it went into the private sector. Okay. Um, there's also, but that's fine. Okay, Nina, you were a little bit more privileged. Your dad and mom paid for undergrad. What about me? My parents barely make ends meet. I don't know what to do. Well, there's FAFSA and FAFSA gives you grants and aids towards your education, your living expenses towards your food, but you do have to maintain a certain GPA, you know, so you have to be a good student in order to get it. I don't know how I, much you... I think it's a 3.0 or higher. 3.0 or higher. Great. I think we should all be able to maintain that. And it's like that. So apply for FAFSA and apply for FAFSA and that will really help bring in some money and you don't have to pay that back at all, right Nick? Correct. Okay, so that's one option. Second option is take out a loan. It's okay to have a loan. I have a loan. I still have my loan. I'll tell you guys why. Take out a loan because if you want to go become an engineer, there's no way of becoming an engineer without the education, right? Right. You know, so that's what it is. But again, I think if you're, the one thing is though Nick, nowadays, if you're undecided, you don't know what you want to do. I, I would say, yeah, if like they were asking me this question, I would yeah. say only take a loan out if you know you can recoup that money. That's, that's what I'm going to say. That, and I agree with that. Because when I went to school, there was no other way of earning money other than like for somebody like me, right? Other than like, a for, like it's not like we had a family business, you know? Like some people like have a family business, they go into the business or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it's like both my parents are doctors, but there's no family business. I have to go and get a degree. So I knew that the loan I was gonna take, I would pay it back. Cause I did, I was like, you're gonna be a dentist, you're gonna work and you're gonna be able to make good money and pay it back. So, but, and those days, those were the only options, you know? Other than again, if you were uber rich, family, uh, whatever, you know? or you were going into acting or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're an athlete. But nowadays there's so many different ways of earning money that I would suggest only take a loan, like Nick said, that when you know, like let's say I graduate as a lawyer, I'm gonna go with this firm, you're gonna earn money and be able to pay it back. Don't go into it just la di da, I'm just gonna get this degree. And then you end up like, you're gonna end up at a job, but you might not be making enough in order to pay back that loan. Mm -hmm. For instance, my high school teachers, they just posted on Facebook this year and they're in their 50s that they finally pay back their student loans. And it was like hell on earth for them basically to pay it back because they don't make enough money as they should. 
So, I and mean, that's the thing. sometimes you have to do what you have to do, but also, like, it's a sucky situation. I, I think sit with your family, really look at your options, really try to figure out what are some, uh, what are some degrees you might get, because you don't know exactly what. Which is why I recommend to a lot of people to go to community college, especially if you don't know what you want to do. Exactly. So don't take a big loan. I mean... Another thing, yeah. scholarships are huge. Oh, scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. And for a lot of athletes out there. Oh, when you're a good athlete, a lot of schools pay your whole way through the school. So um, if you're athletic, get into it, stick to it, because that could be a huge scholarship. There's many different forms of scholarship. Do not give up. Um, research, research, research. Keep you know, doing your research and go to the school, go to the admissions office, ask them what scholarships are being offered, and you'd be surprised how many you can get and those you do not have to pay back. So anything that you don't have to pay back really, really, really helps. Yeah. Right? Carly, the girl who edits your yeah. thumbnails. Hi, Carly. Uh, she got like 10000 She goes to UC Davis for oh, she engineering. She... <gasps> wow. Yeah, she got $10,000 for the scholarships. And that's huge. That's $10,000 that you don't have to pay back. So do your due diligence. Don't be lazy. Get in there and find out everything you can get for free from the government, scholarship, FAFSA. And the rest of it, if you have a good plan and you think you can end up with a good degree, that you're going to earn good enough money, then take that loan out. So I knew. I mean, I'm like, either I can be a dentist or not. And I didn't want my parents to pay for it. I just felt like, you know what they I mean. They paid for enough. Ex exactly. I felt like I'm old enough now that if I can get a loan, I should. And I also felt like... Oh, do you, and you haven't paid it back yet? Fully. No, why? not at all. I'll tell you guys why. Also, one other thing. The reason I took out a loan, because my parents wanted to pay for it, but I told them $200,000, it, it's better if it's sitting in your bank account or your stock market, because I don't have to pay back this loan until I graduate. Mm -hmm. And still, they give you a little bit of time after that. Mm -hmm. You see, so cash is gold. Before interest starts. Before interest starts. So cash is gold. And um, that, that's my opinion. But for some of you out there who family members want to pay for it, you think they might not help you pay for it later, just take it. Yeah. <laughs> just take it and don't do that. But I knew if I wanted to ask my parents later, they would have paid it off. But I chose not to. So let me tell you one thing, and I'm still paying off my student loan. How much um, do you have left? I honestly have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I was talking to my colleague about that, and he still has his uh, college loan. And he's a little bit older than I am. And he's like... Doc, that's the one thing. You pay the minimal amount and let it go as long as possible. But you're getting charged interest, so why? It's very low interest. Like how much? I, you don't have no clue. I have. I think it's like a two point something percent. I have no clue. It's so is very, it what, like $10 a month interest? I, probably. Okay. I honestly don't know. Do you know how much you pay a month? Okay, can I tell you guys something? I'm just so, I'm fascinated. Okay, so it's just like, why would I, okay, so let me explain to you this. Let, I'm sorry, I don't think I've explained it to you guys well enough. Let's say if I have $200,000 in my bank account, why would I take that and pay off a student loan when my loan is on a very little interest rate? I'd rather take the $200,000, go buy a house, renovate it, and sell it for five. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think cash is key. I'd rather take the $200,000, put it in Apple stock, and sit on it for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then be able to pay back my loan and then some later. Mm -hmm. And this is why like, I learned early on not to pay back your student debt all at once. And I'll tell you why, Nick. Um, a few years ago, more like maybe five years ago, let me think, I don't know, just a few years ago, um, a friend of mine recommended me to this law firm and said, do you have student debts? I said, yeah, I'm still paying them monthly. And my monthly payment was $1,500 a month, Nick. It's which, a mortgage. <laughs> it's a mortgage. So it was fine. It is what it is. But um, I said, yeah, I do. Why? They're like, because I, and he was like, well, there's an Obama program that helps reduce your monthly payment and possibly helps eliminate your student loan debt altogether. Because Obama was trying to help a lot of people with debt, you know, kind of like your teachers who couldn't pay it, right? right? I said, okay, great, give me their number. I called them, it's a law firm. And the uh, lady who helps me, her name is, let me see, Joanne Lin. So, and I'll leave their information down below so you can contact them if you have student loans, let them know, and let them know Nina Gray referred you so that, I mean, they've known you for a couple of years now, they'll take excellent care of you. They'll look at your portfolio, they'll look at your student loan package and let you know whether they can reduce your monthly payments, whether they can reduce interest or just eventually eliminate your loan altogether. Okay, so I hope this is really helpful. So this is why I'm and so by the way, this is not sponsored. At oh, all. no, no, no. This part is not sponsored at all. Honestly, this is like literally I had to um, cancel my debit card the other day 
because of some fraud on it. So they sent me, and I'm on an automatic payment with them. So I, um, they sent me something that my credit card failed. So I thought about this. And then when we're doing this video, I was like, Nick, can I talk about this? Nick, I want to talk about this with you guys. So, um, yeah, so we'll leave their email, their phone number down below, call my representative. Hopefully this will help you guys. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are struggling. So what are you paying now a month? $78 a month. Wow. Can you from 1500 to 78? And this is all legal. This is a legal firm. They do many other things law related, but, um, and their section that I'm, that I'm with is credit brain student loan. So for all of you out there, um, who have student loans, give it a try. And I would talk to her the other day to give her my new credit card. I was like, are you guys still like accepting people for the student loan program? And she said, yeah, go ahead and refer people. I was like, okay, I have a couple of friends. I have some coworkers that I actually let them know on Monday. So mm -hmm. yeah, go you guys. And I hope that it really, really, really helps you guys. Cause look, I went from 1500 a month to 78 and part of it might disappear altogether. Sounds like a Geico commercial. <laughs> Sound like a what? Geico commercial. What, what, what is Geico? It's like something save in I 15 know, minutes, save whatever. Um, Nina? Yes, Nick? What do you think about people going out, like out of state to school? Because I know out of state tuition is much more expensive. It's much more, much more expensive. Why do so, they do that? I don't know. That's it's just not rude. right. And honestly, in my heart, I think like in Europe, college is free. In all of Europe? I don't know. In most parts of Europe. Yeah, that's right. And I just, I don't understand why in our country it's not free. I just think it should be free for everybody or at least state school. I don't know. I, that's my opinion. What do you opinion. think about out of state school? Okay, let's go back to out of state school. I think it's, this is the biggest negative. Your tuition is going to be much higher because they're going to charge you out of state fees. Um, Tufts was a private school, so I think it was, I, it didn't matter. It was already expensive. It was already expensive, right? Um, but I would go, the only reason I'd go out of school, so let's say finances are no, uh, there's no object, whatever. Then if you want to go out of school, uh, to an out of state school, it's just for an experience of living somewhere else for a couple of years, mm -hmm. right? So let's, again, that's finances are like, whatever, it doesn't matter how much it costs. I wanted to go to Boston because I was like, I've lived in LA for the most part since I moved to this country and I want to experience something different. When I went for my interview, it just was so nice. Like it was just such a different feel than LA. I was like, I have to experience this for, I have to experience this for a couple of years. And honestly, it was some of the best four years of my life. If you really want to know, mm. like I always have a fondness for Boston and a big piece of my heart is left over there. So, um, was with, it a commuter campus? What is it? Was it a commuter campus? Commuter? What does that mean? Did like a lot of people like live on campus or was like people just like, Went to oh, school oh, or went home. I know that. Oh my God. Why am I blanking out? The commuter campus, of course. No, all the students who went there, we lived in the dorms the first year. Mm. Uh, I think, you, yeah, no, you, ha I think you can commute too. A few people commuted, but it's not worth commuting mm. because you have so much studying to do. And even if you're in the car for 30 minutes, that's 30 minutes that, like that you're not studying, you know, for the most students, I think they were living in the dorms. Yeah. That's what I remember. And then, um, but otherwise, if money is an object, which is for most of us, I wouldn't suggest an out-of-state school because you're going to pay so much more for the same education that you would in-state school. Right. Another thing is, if what if you don't get into any of the in-state school? Then at that point, we don't have a choice, mm -hmm. right? But I think first and foremost, if money is an issue, just try to stay in school, in state school as much as possible. I recommend community college for everyone. I agree. I agree. Why spend? You're spending way less on the same education for the first two years at least exactly which is doing the basic math GE. science ge yeah. english right no i agree and also i think a lot of people when i was in school because i graduated in three and a half years okay. um I th thank you uh, i think what really helped me is i had my guidance counselor that i really trusted and she gave me a list of all the classes that were mandatory i needed to take so i checked off the list every time i did a class so i wasn't taking extra classes and was stuck there longer because i feel like a lot of my peers who are still in college today that started when i started and now it's about seven and a half years later um they didn't know which classes to take so they're taking all these random classes and it didn't even go towards their major Oh, that must hurt. Okay, so great point, Nick. Go to your guidance counselor, sit there and do the mandatory like uh, classes first and then whatever else. So you graduate in less time. That's really smart. Really, really Also, smart. I went to summer school every summer though. Too. You know what? I did too. We're such like... Nerds. Yeah. I, such, I like it. I like being a nerd. I'm still a nerd. <sighs> well... What do you think? That was a really good informative video, I think. I hope, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys really got a lot out of it. Um, I have a lot more to say, you guys. I was just going to say, we didn't even talk about dorms, like living with people. Well, do you guys want another video on that? Let us food know. Plans. Did you oh, food, food plans. Oh, food plans. Um, there's so much more. Yeah, there's so much more um, that goes into. And you know what we should do? We should walk around UCLA and talk about that. 
You know what? Ask your questions in the comments and we'll film another video answering them. I know everything. Oh my God, there's so much more I can tell. Well, with that said, like, love, subscribe, comment down below and keep vlogging.